The National Broadcasting Company presents Joel McRae in Tales of the Texas Rangers. From Hollywood, another authentic reenactment of a case transcribed from the files of the Texas Rangers. Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Texas, more than 260,000 square miles, and 50 men who make up the most famous and oldest law enforcement body in North America. the files of the Texas Rangers come these stories based on fact. Only names, dates, and places are fictitious for obvious reasons. The events themselves are a matter of record. Case for tonight, open and shut. It is 1.37 a.m. September 9, 1945. John Meston, a wealthy rancher, is awakened by the sound of a speeding car screeching to a stop on the driveway outside his house. Seconds later, he jumps out of bed and reaches for a robe as the downstairs door opens. His daughter, Connie, comes up the stairs screaming hysterically. Connie! Connie, baby! What is it? What's the matter? Oh, Daddy Bob! He's dead! He's dead! Bob, dead? What happened to him? Connie, get hold of yourself. What happened? I'm frightened, Daddy. I'm frightened. There was a man with a, a bandana over his face. Where, Connie? Where? The old cattle road east to the ranch. We were parked there. And, oh, it was horrible. Oh, my. Here, here, sit down. Sit down while I call the sheriff. And you'd better have a doctor. Get something for your nerves. <laughs> Tried to hold us up. Why not? Bob had his gun in the car. They, they fought over it. Operator. Uh, operator, get me Sheriff Sykes. I want to report a murder. Connie Meston was in no condition to be questioned, and Sheriff Sykes had only an incoherent story to follow. He called the Texas Rangers. Ranger Jace Pearson was assigned to the case. He arrived at the Meston Ranch shortly before dawn. Might as well wait here in the library, Ranger. The doctor's still in with the girl. He's had a mighty bad shock. Did she tell you where it happened, Sheriff? Yeah, the old cattle road east of the ranch. I got some men riding out there now. They'll call us as soon as they find the body. If that girl isn't going to be able to talk real soon, we better get out with your men. Oh, here's the girl's father. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Sorry to keep you waiting, Sheriff. How are you, Mr. Meston? Glad you got here, Ranger. Can we talk to your daughter now, Mr. Meston? Uh, I'm afraid not. Doctors put her to sleep. Says she must have absolute rest for a few hours. There's no point in our waiting then, Sheriff. We can come back later. I'm sorry, but that'd be best. I'll walk out with you. What's the best way to get to that cattle road? Drive into town, then around the highway. Be shorter to cut across the ranch on horses. You got yours in your trailer. Maybe Mr. Meston will lend me one. Take your pick of the stable, Sheriff. Couldn't we drive across the range? No, you got a ravine to cross and a stream to ford. What time did your daughter get home, Mr. Meston? Just a minute before I called the Sheriff. Little after 1.30. I'd only been in bed about an hour. Locked up about 12.30 and turned in. Hmm. Is this the car she came home in? Yeah, Bob Brady's car. I heard her drive up, then I heard her crying. She came in and tore up the stairs to my bedroom. I'm afraid it's going to take a long time to get over this. Don't let anybody touch this car until I can get a fingerprint man to go over it. The killer may have left his mark someplace. I'll see it ain't touched. Well, I'll go get me a horse and stable, Ranger. How well did your daughter know Brady? Well, they went around together for a spell, but... This date last night was the first they'd had in a long time. Uh, Brady worked for me. Doing what? Uh, accountant. Handled all the ranch business. Got an office in one uh, wing of the house. I see. 
I'll radio for a fingerprint man to come down from our lab while the sheriff's getting his horse. Want me to ride with you for any reason? No. Better do whatever you can to bring your daughter around so we can talk to her. We'll be back later. I made my radio call, and then Sheriff Sykes and I cut across the ranch to the old road. The riders had just found Bob Brady's body. Nothing had been touched. The riders waited while the sheriff and I went over the ground. Standing right beside the car when he was killed. The car tracks are heaviest here where it was parked. Yeah. Brady and the girl have been walking around, though. If prints go over that way and then turn around and come back here to the body. There's a third set of prints mixed in with theirs. Yeah, it must be the killers. Yeah. Came up the road here and stopped beside the car and, and walked on again. Heavy powder burns on Brady's coat. He was shot from close up. I only saw the girl for a minute. Couldn't make much out of what she was saying, but I think Brady was killed with his own gun. How come? Carried an automatic in the glove compartment of his car. He toted quite a bit of the rancher's cash on him sometime. It's funny the killer didn't use his own gun, unless he didn't have one. Well, the girl said Brady tried to get his gun from the car. The fellow took the gun away from Brady and killed him. So I guess he couldn't have had a gun of his own. It doesn't make sense. He was taking a mighty big chance, staging a holdup if he wasn't armed. Although I guess it was robbery, all right. Brady doesn't seem to have a cent on him. No wallet, no wristwatch, nothing. Yeah, no doubt about the motive. Well, I guess I better have the body moved into town. Deputy can notify Brady's mother. Yeah. I'd better order an autopsy report. Isn't going to tell us anything we don't know, though. Uh, keep a couple of your riders here. Sure thing, but what do you want them to do? Beat the brush and look for Brady's gun. And while they're looking, we can follow this extra set of tracks and see where they lead. I expected to follow the marks of a man who didn't want to be followed. The usual erratic trail a killer leaves when he's trying to throw off pursuit. But this trail led straight as an arrow. Hey, whoever he is, he sure didn't cover his tracks very well. No, unless he's headed for some spot where he knows his trail will be lost. Hey, right. right. wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, boy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Charco. What is it? Trouble may start here. Yeah, turned off the road into the fields. The ground's worn that way, though. It's a path that's been used before. Come on. Come on. Grass has been trampled from regular use. Anybody live out here you know of? Nope. Hey, yeah. Yeah, an old shack about a mile and a half across. Used to be a line house. Owner rented to a Mexican. We better have a talk with him. We can move a little faster, but keep your eye out for those tracks as we go. Get up, Charlie. Get up. We reached the shack and the earth around it were the boot prints of a man. They matched the ones we'd been following. Yeah. He's in there, all right, Ranger. Yeah. He may still have that gun with him. He was up late. Could still be asleep. Come on. We'll see. There he is. Still in bed. Shh. Quiet. Take a look at these boots. Mm. Right beside his bunk. Bent nail in the heel of one of them. Yep. Made the marks we've been following, all right. He's our boy. All right, you. Wake up. Uh, 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 Who's that? Come on, get up. Hey, hey. Please. What have I done? Why'd you come here? What's your name? Uh, Jose Morales, senor. Where were you last night? Uh, what? I, I, I walk into town. Anybody see you there? Uh, see, si, see, si, senor. The, the man in the package store. I stopped there to buy a bottle of wine. Uh, there's the bottle on the table. What time did you leave town, Morales? It, it was uh, almost midnight, I think. And you walked home, too? Yes, si, senor, si. But why do you ask me all these questions? I, I don't know. It... How long does it take you to walk back here? Mm, hour, maybe more. I don't have a watch, senor. Are you sure you don't have a watch now? See, si, see, si, I, I never own one. Senor. How about a gun? I, I don't have a gun. 
How did you come when you came home? Well, I... Uh, no, I, I don't remember, senor. I, I, I just walked. Well, you but... better remember. You came up the cattle road. We followed your boot tracks. Were you alone all the time? Si, si, alone. You didn't see a car parked on the cattle road? Oh, oh si, si, senor, si. Mm. Uh, there is men and girls there. They, uh, they will remember that they see me there. What's that? Hold it, Sheriff. Go ahead, Morales. When did they see you? Uh, uh, on the way home, I, I passed by the car. I, I, I think maybe the car is, uh, broke down. So I took a look inside, but there's nobody there. Uh-huh. And then I walk a little further. I meet a man and girl. I asked them, is something wrong with the car? Go ahead. Well, they told me no. So I just come away. Uh, senor, if you can find him, they will remember. They can tell you I was there. This man's walking himself right into the electric chair, Jace. Yeah, too easy. You better get dressed, Morales. You're coming with us. But why, senor? What have I done? You'll find out later. Just get dressed. Let's come to the shack, Sheriff. See if we can find that gun. <laughs> We didn't find the gun or anything else that might have been taken from Brady. And the sheriff's riders drew a blank, too. But we had enough to hold Morales at the jail. We locked him up and went back to the Meston Ranch. Uh, Before you speak to my daughter, gentlemen, I I want to ask you to kind of take it easy. Uh, In here. Connie, it's Sheriff Sykes and the ranger. Howdy. Miss Connie. Hello. Miss Meston. Would you mind telling us just what happened last night? Well, Bob called me, Bob Brady. He wanted to see me. We hadn't seen each other for some time. I thought he worked here at the ranch. Well, it did. I meant we hadn't been out together for a long time. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, he he picked me up here, and we drove. Then we parked up the old cattle road. Lots of young folks parked there on an off-ranger. It's sort of a lover's lane. We, we'd been there quite a while talking. You see, Bob was going to be married next month to a girl named Mildred Peterson. She's a school teacher, Ranger. I see. Go ahead, Miss Meston. Well, he asked me if I wouldn't change my mind and make up with him before he got married and it was too late. Mm-hmm. I, I, I told him we weren't right for each other. He, he'd be happier with somebody else, and then, well, all of a sudden, a man came up to the cart. It, it was dark, and he had a bandana over his face. Go on. We, he, he held us up. He made us get out of the car. You have a gun? I, I'm not sure. I was frightened. He, he had something in his hand. He, oh, he, he no. took Bob's wallet and his watch, and then, then he told us to stay right where we were. Didn't he take anything from you? Well, yes. Yes, he, he took my purse. And then what happened? Well, all of a sudden, Bob made a dash for the car. He, he, he got his gun from the glove compartment, but the man was right after him. They, they fought. The, the man got the gun away from Bob, and then, and he shot Bob and ran away. Hey, gentlemen, if you don't mind, just I another think second, that... Mr. Meston. Miss Meston, <laughs> what were you wearing? Well, just a plain blue taffeta dress. It's right there on the chair. After that, you took Brady's car and drove back here, and your father called the sheriff, is that right? Yes, sir. Driving back from there, you had to come through town. Why didn't you stop and get to a phone? I was frightened. I couldn't think. I, I wanted to get home. You should be able to understand that, Ranger. After all, the sure. girl kept... Sure, Mr. Meston. Just checking. You said you were in bed and heard your daughter drive up, is that right? Yes, like I told you before. I locked up and turned in about 12.30. Connie come home about an hour later. Came in and right up to your bedroom, is that right? Yes. Why? Just get in the picture. All right, Sheriff. We can go now. Right. Oh, we can find our own way out, Mr. Meston. Miss Connie can come into town and dictate her statement in a day or so. Thank Bye, you, folks. Sheriff. Bye. Well, Ranger, this looks like a quick one to me. Case against the Mexican Morales is open and shut. I don't know, Sheriff. Somebody's lying. Meston said he locked up and went to bed. His daughter came in and went tearing up to his bedroom. Well, what's wrong with that? How'd she get into the house if Morales took her purse? Her keys would be in her. Well, she might have had her key in the pocket of her dress. Might have, except for one thing. That dress has no pockets. (laughs) 
In just a moment, we will continue with Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. This month, the National Broadcasting Company celebrates 25 years of bringing you the best radio programs. Seven days a week, you can depend upon NBC for music, drama, comedy, entertainment of every kind, as well as the latest up-to-the-minute news from every corner of the world. When you tune where you hear the familiar NBC chimes, you know you're tuned for the finest in radio listening. We continue now with Tales of the Texas Rangers and tonight's case, Open and Shut, an authentic story from the files of the Texas Rangers. I checked on Morales' story as best I could. He had been in town, and he had bought a bottle of wine to take home with him the night of the murder. But when I got back to the jail, the sheriff had evidence piling up against the Mexican. Your fingerprint crew dropped off copies of prints they found on Brady's car. Uh Uh-huh. These prints were found only on the door of the car. Now, compare them with these. Hmm. Same man, all right. Matching set of the prints I rolled off Morales when we brought him in. He must have done it. Maybe. But I'm not convinced. I'll see you later. Here, where are you going, Ranger? To see Brady's mother and the girl he was going to marry. <laughs> the only boy I had left. His two brothers were killed in the war. And... Please, Mother <laughs> Brady, we've got to help the Ranger. Oh, I'm sorry, Ranger. It's all right, ma'am. How long had it been since your son had been out with Connie Meston before last night? Six months. I thought it was all over. I thought she'd leave him alone when she knew him and Mildred was going to be married. Did he brood about her much during the time he wasn't seeing her? No. He knew it was best. She was spoiled. She never really wanted him. Except when she found out she couldn't have him. Uh, Miss Peterson, you and Brady ever quarrel about Connie Meston? Oh, no. He was over it. He knew what she was. She's a cruel, heartless little cheat. She made his life miserable. Have you got any idea why he called her and asked her to see him that night? Well, Ranger, he didn't call her. She called him. You're sure of that? I heard him answer the phone. He didn't want to go, but she must have been insisting because after a while he said, all right, he'd meet her just once. For the last time. (laughs) Thanks. Ranger, is it true what we heard? You've got the killer in jail? I wouldn't count on that. Yet. I went back to the jail and questioned Morales again. He was frightened, but his story never moved an inch from what he told us the first time. Then I saw the sheriff. I spoke to the district attorney, Jace. He thinks we got enough to take the grand jury for an indictment. Give me one of the mug shots you took of Morales when you brought him in. Sure. Here's a picture. Thanks. I want Connie Meston to look at it and see if she can identify Morales. Well, she said the man who stuck him up had a bandana over his face. She said a lot of things, Sheriff. Brady struggled with the man who killed him. Morales carried a bottle of wine from town to his shack. We checked that. If he had a struggle with anyone, how come he didn't drop the bottle and break it? Mm, it seems like it would have broke, don't it? You got a bandana here? Yeah, the one we took from Morales. Why? No, not that one. I want one with a different color and pattern. Maybe you wanted my deputy's locker. Get it. I want to see how many lies Connie Meston can tell. I won't be satisfied with the case against Morales until we find Brady's gun and the things that were supposed to be stolen. I went back to the Meston ranch the next morning. Connie Meston was taking Brady's death hard. As hard as a rock. She wasn't at the ranch house. She was near the corral, training a jumper to take a fence. All right, come on, boy, now. Let's go. Come on. Oh. Now, back again. Come on. Come on. Come on, I said. Well, I'll teach you to balk. When I want you to jump, you'll jump. Come on. Take it easy with that horse. Oh. A ranger. I didn't see you coming. Glad to see you've recovered from your shock. Well, I had to find something to occupy my mind. 
thought I'd work my horses. I got them entered in the show at El Paso next Sunday. Yeah, it'd be nice if the horse lives that long, the way you use that whip. It happens to be my horse. Now, what do you want, anyway? A little information. We may have the man who killed Brady. Oh, yeah, I heard. The Mexican Morales? News gets around. Here's a picture of him. Is he the man? Well, he could be. He looks like the one. What do you recognize? That scar on his chin? Yeah. Well, no. I mean, no. He, his face was covered. Yeah, I, I almost forgot about that. Is this the bandana you saw? Well, it, it was dark, but it was just like that one. Uh-huh. Well, thanks. Uh, that all you want to know, Ranger? Yeah, that's all. For now... I saw Connie Meston's father as I was leaving the ranch. He seemed pale and shaky seeing me there. I was certain that Connie Meston was lying all the way. The sheriff dropped a bombshell in my lap when I got back to the jail. He was running for his car when I drove up. Hey, Sheriff! Sheriff, where are you going? Oh, I, I'm glad you got here. I was just heading for Morales' place. You'll want to come along, I reckon. Why? What's out there? I think we're going to find the gun and the stuff he stole. Look, here. Just got this in the mail. It was posted last night in the Mexican section. The note was printed in Spanish on yellow paper. It said, look in cattle tank near Morales' house. That was all. Reckon Morales trusted a friend who decided to double-cross him? We better get out there. Okay. Well, there's no doubt about this case now, Ranger. We find that gun and Morales is headed for the electric chair for sure. Hey, here. Here's something else. What'd you find? The watch. Brady's wrist watch. Good. Well, this is all of it. Come on, let's get out of this water. Sure. Nice haul. The gun, the girl's purse, Brady's wallet, and wristwatch, right on Morales' doorstep. That's the end of this case. No, it isn't. Oh, now, Jay. Look at these things, Sheriff. Look at the muzzle of this gun. It's clogged solid with dirt, packed tight. Well, always some mud in the bottom of a cattle tank. Yeah, but this isn't mud. It's packed earth, and it's packed so tight it didn't dissolve in the water. Yeah. Say, that is funny. Sheriff, this gun was buried someplace after it was fired. Buried and then dug up again and thrown into this cattle tank. Say, you're right. Traces of dirt packed into the holes of the wash band, too. And in the wallet. Sure. But look at this purse. The purse wasn't buried. Or the same dirt would be jammed in the metal frame. <laughs> Connie Meston's keys. She had them when she ran home after Brady was shot. She brought the purse with her to plant with the stuff she dug up after she knew Morales was under suspicion. You mean she killed Brady, buried the evidence before she went home to make it look like robbery? Yeah, because the real motive was jealousy. You hold Morales another 24 hours. That'll be long enough to get what we need. Then Connie Meston can take his place. But you've got no proof on her. I'll send that anonymous note through to the handwriting division at our lab. They can get a sample of Connie Meston's writing from horse show registration blanks at El Paso for comparison. Yes, but will that help, Ranger? After all, the note is printed, and it's in Spanish. There'll still be similarity in letter formation. Besides, registration blanks usually ask for printed information on breeding and identification. If Connie Meston wrote that note, Lab will know it. It checked. Connie Meston's printing on registration blanks for the horse show matched the printing on the anonymous note. It was almost enough, but I wanted one more thing. A trace of dirt on something she owned. A trace that would match the earth that had been packed in the muzzle of Brady's gun when it was buried. I drove out to the Meston ranch and found Connie in the stables. Mind if I come in? Oh, you here again? What do you want this time? I thought you might like to know we found Brady's gun. Anonymous note told us where it was. Cattle tank out at Morales' place. Hmm. You got a good case, then. No. Morales didn't put the gun in the tank. How do you know? Because the gun and the other things had been buried. They were dug up again and thrown in the tank. Well, maybe he decided to, to change the hiding place. While we were holding him in jail? No, it's not likely. Morales didn't kill Brady. 
Well, you know who did? Not for sure, but we'll find out. Whoever dug those things up must have carried them in something while they were taking them to the cattle tank. Some dirt was jammed in the muzzle of the gun. We find out what it was carried in, clothing maybe, somebody's pocket. We can match the dirt in our lab. I see. That's very interesting. I thought you'd think so. Well, I guess I'd better be getting back to town. I drove away from the ranch and parked behind some trees that gave me a view of the stable. A minute after I left her, Connie Meston came out, riding like the wind. I unloaded charcoal from the trailer and followed her, always keeping cover between us. She didn't seem to be carrying anything to dispose of, but all of a sudden she came to a stop by a stream. She took the saddlebags and started to shake them out over the water. Oh, oh boy. Oh, boy. All right, charcoal, let's go. Get up, boy. Yeah. Stay right where you are, Miss Meston. What are you doing? I'll take those saddlebags. Well, sure. Any log and empty them into a stream? None that I know of. Well, take them then, Ranger, because they're empty. Not as empty as you wish they were. And a few grains of dirt stuck in the seam. That's all we're going to need. Well, you can't make anything out of that. Oh, I got a few other things. That anonymous note in Spanish matched the registration blanks you sent into El Paso. I don't think you'll be showing your horses Sunday. Why, you... Give me that whip. You... Go. You won't be using this again either. Now, get on your horse and ride for the house. <laughs> I'm taking her in, Mr. Meston. I got an idea you started to suspect she was lying the same time I did. She's, she's not lying, Ranger. She, she didn't know nothing about it. I did it. I shot Brady. I'm sorry, but... That won't work either. I got her pinned down all the way. Daddy, Daddy, help me talk to him. Well, give him some money. What kind of a father are you if you can't help me? Shut up! Why, you... You hit me. Yes. I should have started 20 years ago before I let you get to be what you are. Maybe I'm not legally guilty, Ranger. But I'm guilty of raising another way I did. Too bad you didn't think of it sooner. All right, Connie, let's get into town. Connie Meston's trial was spotted with hysterics that failed to convince the court, although she maintained she was innocent in the face of overwhelming evidence against her. Then, as the trial neared a close, she changed her plea to guilty... And in an effort to avoid a death sentence, she confessed she was sentenced to the women's prison at Huntsville for 50 years. Next week, Joel McRae in another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of the Texas Rangers. Joel McRae is currently seen starring in the Universal International Technicolor production, Cattle Drive. The cast included Tony Barrett, Joan Banks, Francis X. Bushman, Farley Bear, and Vivi Janis. Technical advisor was Captain M.T. Lone Wolf Gonzalez of the Texas Rangers. This story was transcribed and adapted by Joel Mercott, and the program was produced and directed by Stacy Keith. Hal Gibney speaking. It's the Silver Jubilee on NBC. Next, it's The Big Show, with stars including Sophie Tucker, June Valley, Jerry Lester, Ann Sheridan, Morton Downey, and your charming hostess, Tallulah Bankhead. Then enjoy mirth and music with Phil Harris and Alice Fay. Later, Theater Guild on the Air presents Age of Innocence, co-starring Claudette Colbert and MacDonald Carey. And for pictures of your favorite NBC stars, buy the current NBC Silver Jubilee issue of Radio TV Mirror Magazine. Next, it's The Big Show. All this and Tallulah, too, on NBC.